Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, to the session um, celebrating screen studies. And um, I'm, I'm Nicola MacDonald. I'm Education Officer for Literacy with Education Scotland. And um, you'll see the familiar protocol slides. Um, just draw your attention to um, a couple of the points on this slide. So please uh, keep your mics and cameras off while our presenters are speaking. Also a reminder that the session is being recorded um, and that will be available after this session. And um, lastly, if you would like to use the chat panel to ask any questions or make any comments, please do that. There will be an opportunity at the end to have some question and answers uh, session with our presenters today. So uh, we really encourage you to use the chat a pain just to um, start to think about some of the questions you'd like to you to uh, pose during that time. So at this point, I, I'll pass over now to Fee Milligan Rennie. She is he um, head of education with Screen Scotland, and she is joined, as you can see, by um, some lovely uh, young people behind her and some others so that I will let her introduce. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. We are live from Sankar Primary School in Dumfrieshire. I am joined this afternoon by Sasha Kieran, not Kieran, Keegan, Sasha, Keegan, Evie and Riley, who are in P6 here, and their teacher, Mrs Clark, who is currently hiding at the back. Mrs Clark, could you give us a wee wave? Um, I'm also joined by David Barris, who's behind me from the Scottish Youth Film Foundation, and uh, Steve, Professor Steve Love from Glasgow School of Art. I'll explain a little bit about why everybody's here in a moment. First of all, I'm going to explain the the um, the running order for today. So first and foremost, I am so enchanted to be here. It's absolutely wonderful to be able to speak to, uh, to speak at the Scottish Learning Festival, and I thank Nicola and her team very much for the invitation. My name is Fee Milligan Rennie. I am the head of education for Screen at Screen Scotland, which is part of Creative Scotland. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my role um, and what we're doing in, with the Screen Education team at Screen Scotland. I will then. Um, share with you, uh, some of our, I'll ask some of our uh, guests here to share with you their thoughts and feelings about screen education. P6 at Sankar Primary this afternoon have had a filmmaking workshop with uh, David from the film, uh, Scottish, film, Scottish Youth Film Foundation and they're going to talk a wee bit about what they learned and what they did. We, had, we, we started the day with no films and we ended the day with six films and we started at one o'clock and we finished at three o'clock so I think we've done quite well so far. Um, I'm also going to ask some questions of um, Mrs Clark, who has previously worked in moving image education with Steve from Glasgow School of Art and a project that he did last year called the Tall Tales Story Club. I'm going to uh, and then I am going to um, ask David a few questions about his work in schools and the Scottish Youth Film Foundation work across the country. And so there's lots of rich um, evidence that he can share. And then I am going to throw uh, the floor open for questions. If you've got a question at any time, please give me a shout. I feel a wee bit like we're in a sort of a Val Dunican's style Christmas special, the way we're set up here, but I hope everybody can see and hear us okay. Um, that's an incredibly aged reference, but I'm, I'm going to roll with it because it's, it's the best I've got at this point. So I started with Screen Scotland um, in March this year, taking over from my colleague Scott Donaldson, who retired then. Many of you may know, may know Scott or have done work with Scott in the past. My remit is very clear. It is to embed film and screen education across Scotland um, in schools um, to complement the work that is happening across the country in screen access organisations. We believe very firmly that film and screen education is a fundamental literacy and a fundamental right of every children, child in Scotland to have the opportunity to learn about it. I am currently working with local authorities in Scotland to develop and deliver a screen educated in residence programme. But I'm going to tell you a wee bit about the history of that first. So, and it's not really a history because it's quite new, but in July this year, we gathered together a symposium of 30 screen educators, teachers, public body representatives from Education Scotland, SQA, from Scottish Government and from the film and television industry together in a room for two days in Stirling where we authored a draft curriculum for film and screen education in Scotland. 
We use the term film and screen to best encapsulate all of the opportunity that any kind of moving image education can be and can uh, use. And if we, we reckon if art and design can do it and craft and technology can do it, so can we. It's no longer just about film. Screen makes up 80% of the content on the internet and it's something that is being consumed by our children and young people every day. They should be creating it too. We see it as an opportunity for people to discuss thoughts, feelings and ha have voices heard. We see it as a process of visual advocacy, visual activism and um, Again, uh, we see it as a fundamental literacy. This afternoon, David Barris from the Scottish Youth Film Foundation came down to Sanka Primary with us and delivered a workshop um, about making films for the first time uh, to some of the young people that we have here. So I am going to now ask them some questions. So we've done a wee bit of preparing and I'm going to turn my back to the camera. My apologies for that. Um, We've done a wee bit of preparing about what you might want to say, but Keegan, can I ask you first of all to just describe what happened in the classroom this afternoon? So, um, basically, we started off by learning a few. <clears throat> we started off by learning a few things like um, what different camera angles there are, what types of sh shots there are you can make, and how many shots we'll be making in our film. And then we went on to make our, oh, what's it called again? Storyboard air thing. <laughs> and and then we went on to make some movies about what our storyboard, and then we got different words to, um, to, <laughs> to, to, like, to, to, you know, to like, share? To like, um, oh, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, to like, <coughs> to not say, I to not say when we're making our films, and we made our films and then we watched them and we had to try and guess what the word was. And yeah, it's just that, that was what you did, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to go around here and I'm going to say to Evie. Sasha, you can decide who wants to answer this question. I'll come back to you in a moment, Riley. How did you feel about this afternoon, the activity this afternoon, Evie? Uh huh. Sasha, have you got anything? to try something new. And was it new for you? Had you done it before? No. So you 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 started today without having made a film, and you finished today having made a film. You're a filmmaker now. Amazing, thank you. Riley, how did you feel about this afternoon? Uh, it was fun, enjoyable. Uh, we also had a good time outside trying to find where we should make our movie. So you enjoyed the locations part of it? So what did, so Keegan told us about um, what he did so you got you were given a word that you couldn't tell anybody and then you had to make a six shot film that showed that word and then everybody else had to guess that yeah. word that's right isn't it mm -hmm. so tell me all the skills that you you had to use when you were doing that we had to use good um, what's it called good aiming good hand grip uh -huh. um, you also have to use good motion like if they were walking up you would maybe have to move but still keep the camera on them mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I so I had to watch out for like no one knows it's like what the other people were making in the background just in case we had to say something. Okay. Sasha, what other skills were you using? Technology. You were learning about technology. Excellent. What else? Please feel free because I'm going I'm doing this. <laughs> and I imagine it's very distracting from a visual perspective. So just jump in. Tell me what you were doing, everybody. So, um, like, oh, well, so think about skills. Think about so things you were doing. Uh, communication, expression, um, coordination, com co compromise. Whatever. Yeah, that was what was talking about earlier. Um, that's just about it. I'll pass over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, can you think of anything else? Did you do it by yourself? No, I've done it. I've done it in teams. So what's it like working in a team? 
you have to use a spell to do that. Mm -hmm. But what we were going to do then. It's really hard to be on the spot, isn't it? I'm going to come back to you. Um, I'm now going to ask David Barris, who's over here, to talk a wee bit. I'm going to loom over. Loom. Uh, David is going to loom. And I'm going to, David, if you can just talk a wee bit about the work of the, the Scottish Youth Film Foundation, working in schools and what you have, what's coming to the edge, what you're bringing to, to a classroom when you do that. Yeah, so the Scottish Youth Film Foundation has been in um, existence for a few years. It used to just be the Scottish Youth Film Festival. We're on our eighth festival this year. This this year's one is going to take place in a couple of weeks, few weeks in Dumfries, October 21st to 23rd. If anybody's wanting to come down, um, Saturday the 22nd is the Teenage Day and Sunday the 23rd is the Primary School Day. It's a free festival. We have film industry people along. There's workshops, panels and all sorts going on. Um, but we have three different strands to our work, and one of them is education. So myself and my colleagues go into schools and we take filmmaking from first principles right through to finished films. So today we did it in two hours, um, but we often will go in for you know weeks at a time, do different sessions depending on who's funding us and what we're there for. But essentially, it's kind of what Fee was saying earlier on. This is a 21st century literacy. People are consuming it all the time. Young people should be able to read and write using film. And, and the Scottish Youth Film Festival firmly believes that every child should have the opportunity to do that. So a lot of this stuff is known to young people because we've all grown up in, in, in a visual culture. So they know about these things. It's very easy to unlock the learning. And it's very easy to get them from the point where they've never made a film, like these four here and the other 18 that were in the class, to the point where they can take an iPad or whatever, the, the tools that are available to them in the classroom now, and actually utilise that, learn about shots, learn about meaning, learn about all the things that films do marvellously, uh, empathy, all that kind of thing, and they can turn it and do it and express themselves creatively. And the more they look into that, the more learning there is to be unlocked. I think there's all the meta skills, there's all the communication, team building, there's tech, there's so many things that film does that other um, learning doesn't do. And project based work is fantastic for that. So that's one of the things we, we really push is, that, is to allow young people to, on their own, come up with something that they can then express and, and film visually and present to, them, to their peers and at things like the festival to present to the wider world. Thank you, David. Can you just talk a wee tiny bit about one of the projects that you had done previously, which was in Clackmannanshire, and the difference it made to traditional literacy engaging with film literacy as a starting point? Yeah, so just pre-pandemic, we did a, an education pilot project in Clackmannanshire and so quite a few different schools. And we used film as a, as a tool to uh, enhance literacy and it had, it had an amazing impact. Um, a lot of the people, a lot of the young people that wouldn't have engaged with reading um, after the film project, they were much more willing to write more, they were much more willing to look at how characters were motivated and how characters went through a story because they'd seen how it worked in film and they could take that learning and just basically take it from one subject to another and from, or from one medium to another. So the teachers were actually amazed by how well literacy in film just translates across the board and literacy across the board went up in all those schools that we were working in. And that was only a... Uh, that was a six session intervention. So we came along and did six sessions in the school, going from that first principles that I was talking about earlier through to actually making their own films and then doing things like review writing and being able to really take a film apart and know exactly what filmmakers' intentions were. Um, so we'd look at things like advertising and some of them were doing World War II at the time. So we looked at propaganda films, all those kind of things where it's crucial that young people understand what filmmakers are trying to get across them and if filmmakers are trying to hoodwink them or sell them something, how they're doing that, how they're being manipulated through the moving image, as well as just the joy of having a story that's maybe from out with their culture or out with their country being told to them in a visual medium. Thank you so much. I'm now going to ask Sa uh, Mrs Clark. <laughs> <laughs> um, for you have, last year you worked with Glasgow School of Art on the Tall Tales Story Club, which was filmmaking, a filmmaking in the classroom project. Yes. Do you want to tell us a wee bit about that? Yes. We've actually worked with Stephen, uh, Steve, sorry, yeah. at Glasgow School of Art for the past two years, and it's absolutely fantastic. So, um, 
Glasgow School of Art. So I didn't know anything about filmmaking, I will be absolutely honest. I knew nothing really about it, about the technology or what really, how it, placed, it was placed in the classroom. But from doing this for the last two years, my skills have enhanced, the children's skills have enhanced. It has so many areas of the curriculum, literacy, expressive arts, Tall Tale Club, um, we tied it in with the community. So we're hitting more social studies subjects. There's just so much that you get out of it. The skills the children get from their communication, their teamwork, and the enjoyment they get out of it. And you actually see there's every child puts something into it. Even like today, the children who are usually quite shy and reserved, pretending to punch each other for the screen <laughs> outside. It's they loved it. And they really make it their own. And again, so the Tall Tale project was a project that lasted a full term and it was a topic for the term. So we really went into it. We had prop making, we had drama, stop motion. So there's a different kind of technology for a different kind of film. And it was up to it was also free choice from the children and they decided what they wanted to use. So the children take ownership of it. And what they created in the end was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's just really enjoyable. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Clark. <laughs> I'm going to introduce Professor Steve Matthews. Steve, do you want to talk a wee bit about the thinking behind the Tall Tales project and then maybe introduce something of the Living Labs project that you plan to do next? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, the idea of the you know, Tall Tales Story Club, <clears throat> previous work with Digital Sanker, is you know, part of my job. What I'm really interested in the Glasgow School of Art is engaging with schools. Our plan is to engage with schools right across the educational spine, nursery schools, primary schools, secondary schools. It's all about looking at creativity, unlocking people's creative potential and going through a creative design process and how you can use screen and digital technology to tell stories, to find out different aspects about the curriculum. But in this instance, what we're focused on is screen education. So we're working with schools in Dumfries, Sankar, schools in Glasgow and schools up in Mori. And the whole idea of our, our living lab is that we want to engage with schools, as I said, right across the, the spine of education to work on these kind of project briefs and bring our art school approach of kind of creative design because we see, we believe in studio approach to learning. So the classroom we're in today, this is a studio as far as I look at it from a creative design perspective. And it's just like turning your classroom into that studio space so you can engage with the brief. And it's very much a uh, children and teacher led. We can give an outline, but we really want to see people unlocking their own creativity with their sort of creative ideas. And, you know, if anyone's interested, they're more than welcome uh, to get in contact with us. Thank you so much, Steve. So Steve will be running the, his, his Glasgow School of Art Living Labs project. Um, in, it's the same local authorities again, isn't it? Glasgow, Glasgow Dumfries, Maury, Maury, and, the Western, and the Western Isles. So if there's anyone listening from any of those local authorities and they'd like to be put in touch with Steve, please let Nicola know and I'll pass on um, details. I'm going to come back to just ask uh, the young people, the young filmmakers that we have here, if there was, if you had to persuade somebody to do film in a classroom, how would you do that? What would you say to them? Just asking to them not like, make them if you don't do this. You okay, so you would, you would, you would just offer it as an option, but not, not but not make them do it. How would you get Mrs? I mean, Mrs. Clark's been very clear that she likes it. What would you say, Keegan, if you wanted to tell somebody why, how good it was, or what was good about it? What would you say? Um, probably much the same as Riley. I wouldn't force them to say like do this, or you're going to go to the naughty step. <laughs> 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 and um, I would just like to say. It's really fun. It's a good if you're bored. It's a good way to spend up time if we've got any free time. And once again, it's just really fun. Yeah. Do you think you do you think you could use it to learn stuff? Yeah. 
because what could you use it to learn your whole if you wanted to like knowledge and technology um if you wanted to like film a any sport match or a movie you would know how to do all the angles mm -hmm. and stuff so you're learning skills for work then mm -hmm. even in p6 cool <laughs> Evie, Sasha, what would you say? What would you say is good about it, or what would you change about it? What would you would you do so anything differently? Make it longer, do it more. Yeah. Because we did it for two hours today, and it didn't feel like two hours at all, did it? Yeah, it's like it felt. It only felt like three minutes. Like I said, it's a good way to take up your time if you've got yeah. any. Time flies. Maybe because you can't chat too much. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking a little bit about how I'm a total blather and it's very really difficult for me to get anything done because I'm super chatty. Um, so I'll take that as a as a note for myself. Um, we don't want to spend our entire session uh, just talking at you. So we'd be really, really interested in hearing if you have any questions um, and who you would direct those questions to. If you could pop that in the chat, that would be great. Um, I'm just looking to see if anybody's typing. Nobody's typing. Oh, Hazel is <laughs> typing. Excellent. So, so we'll just wait for a moment while the chat comes up. Um, it's perhaps worth mentioning again that Screen Scotland are, uh, will be from uh, next month delivering a fully funded Screen Educated in Residence programme, which will go to thick lo lo local authorities uh, across Scotland. And I'm in negotiation with that at the moment, but if you're particularly interested, please, please, please get in touch with me. Hazel has asked, do you have any, any online resources you can share with us to read more? Yes, Screen Scotland Education department have a whole suite of resources on our website called Screening Shorts. It's screeningshorts.co.uk. It is a library of over 100 short films and with each of those short films you will find a suite of resources for classroom delivery. Those are accessible and depending on which age range Things you teach, you'll be able to find screening shorts. Thank you, Nicola. Um, you'll be able to find a resource. So, for example, there's stuff on there for teeny weenies um, from early years, uh, P1 to P3. There's stuff for older primary school children. There are resources there for um, secondary school across the whole of the, the um, from, from first year to, to senior phase. And uh, we, we warmly encourage you to use that. We also run once a month a Tuesday session, which is about screen education in, in a particular context. Again, you can find details about that on the Screen Scotland website. Um, and there's lots and lots and lots of resources available from different organisations, um, which I will be happy to put together a, a, a detailed uh, links page. Um, there's a lot of information on our website, so I'll make that your first port of call. Does that answer your question, Hazel? Oh, thank you. Um, Excuse me, yes. Um, does anybody have any questions for the young people in the room? <laughs> Except Sasha, because she's shy. Would you recommend it to other children? How many marks out of 10? I'm behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Keegan, would you recommend it? Yes, definitely. Um, I would. In 2010, I would probably say, hmm, what, like today's experience or overall? Overall. Hmm, 10. 10. So 10 out of 10 from Keegan. What about you, Riley? Yeah, I would probably recommend it. It was fun. It was good fun. Yeah. Because I was doing work for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, you, that was work. <laughs> 
You just didn't know it. Okay, it Sasha, can you, can you think of a mark out of 10? 10. 10 out of 10 from Sasha and 10 out of 10 from Evie. No room for improvement whatsoever. Just longer. Yeah, just more. Just longer, more time. We bump it down to nine out of ten. Nine point five. Nine point five. Okay, that sounds fair. Um, I'm I'm looking to see there's some typing going on. So perhaps have another question. Great feedback. What a recommendation. Thank you. Let's have a look. The thing about Teams, of course, is that if somebody's typing on Teams and they're in this call, even if they're not typing something to us, we can still see that they're typing. So we see you, Julia. <laughs> we're, we're very excited to see if you have a question coming our way. <laughs> Do you know what? I think it might be better if I just speak because I'm typing yeah, so slowly. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's I'm lovely good. to see you all. Um, very well, thank you. It's lovely to see you. And it's great to see all you learners there too. So I, my job is all about creativity. And so I really loved hearing how creative you've been in making films this morning. And I wanted to ask you if you were all um, able to share your ideas and put ideas into the film that you made this morning. Did you think you got the chance? Did you get the chance to share ideas this morning or this afternoon? So we started off with a story. So the class were in groups were given a, a word that they weren't allowed to tell anyone else. And then they were taught a little bit about um shots and angles and what those mean and we talked about how feelings are conveyed through film and then uh, they were each given a word and they had to keep that a secret and only work in their team to create a six shot short piece that would demonstrate that feeling so the the, the creativity came from the interpretation around so, so there was a bit of creative yes. context and a bit of creative limitation in that the film had to be about the word so it wasn't just make a film about something, but really consider and work as a team to to agree on an understanding of what that word meant and how it might be shared more widely through a visual medium. I'm asking a good question. That's very good. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No. Anything else over here? Well, you need to say what your word was and how you conveyed it. Oh, that, Julia, that would be good, oh, Julia. I would, Julia. I would love to hear about that, yeah. Your word, Keegan. Um, <laughs> mine was happy. So... Wait, what is it? How did you plan it? So, um, we all, we all said to each other, right, we're going to, we're going to, um, all say ideas and then we'll vote for who's the best and then uh mine won so uh I gave I gave out the plan again we drew it in and we started filming got distracted and <laughs> finish <laughs> So you've already you, so you've you've mentioned democracy there because you had everybody had an opportunity to say yeah. the idea. So democracy in the create in the creative decision making that's really interesting. And yours one, and then and, and then, how did you decide what happy is? What happy looks like? So we decided like so it's like a bit of a emotions like um, so in the, so it would start off like I was pretty sad. Um, depressed and it was Monday and we had to go to school <laughs> and and then I saw and then we saw the film making thing on the board and we all went yes <laughs> <laughs> and then that's where we got <laughs> Julia does that answer your question? Oh that's brilliant I um, love so that and I can imagine your, your film, it sounds fantastic. Thank you for sharing. 
So we've got another question from Nicola that says, did your work today help you with your literacy skills, listening and talking, reading or writing? Yes. How did it do that, Sasha? Can you think? Which bit? Was it listening? Was it reading? Was it writing? Was it talking? Was it all of those things? Taking tea into David and he was telling us about the different angles and making. Supposed to be doing. Right. And who else did you have to listen to? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and who else? <laughs> when you were making the work? <laughs> to each other. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you think it helps with what you say? Uh, yeah, I would say it helps with everything like you just said. For me, it uh, yeah, for me anyway, <laughs> and um, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say like I'm good at everything, but like um, I'm quite good at talking. I've quite an experience with my, yeah, Barnes and everything. So the talking, it's still, even though I'm still good at it, I still have areas to improve, and that helped me a wee bit. Good. Can you tell me, can you explain how? Yeah, because it made me better speaking in front of the camera because normally I'm no comfortable speaking in videos because it, like, it, it makes my voice sound really, really weird. And yeah, I'm just, I just don't really like it. But there, uh, it's, I was able to explain it some more of that and I was able to build up on that even like yeah I was able to build up on that. Right. Evie is there anything you'd like to add? Um, no? I think everybody else has covered it. Yeah thank you. Really? Um, oh. what Sasha said. Great, thank you. So we've got a question from Mr Hurley that says, anybody thinking of a career in filmmaking? No. <laughs> no. Riley says, definitely not. No. no. Mrs thank Clark you. is. Sasha. 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 Yes, what would you like to do? Helping with the camera. So camera's quite, camera's quite good when you've, when you're maybe a little bit shy because you've got something in front of you, between you and the other people, and you're often a really deep thinker, and you can see things that other people can't see and pick out details to, to film and stuff like that. You think you might like to work in the film industry? Maybe. <laughs> you like lots of different things though, don't you? Yeah. Mr Hurley's laughing, <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> I think he might be laughing because Riley said no. <laughs> but I think it's really important to note that learning about filmmaking in a classroom is not about is not just about learning to work in a particular industry or understanding that that industry is accessible to anybody. Screen Scotland are very clear that there we have two primary a uh, primary points that we want to support in our screen education work, and one is that we are looking to Scotland for stories, for opportunities to be heard, for ways in which to articulate thoughts and feelings about anything and everything, the visual advocacy and uh, activism that I spoke of earlier. Um, and we also want to develop a talent pipeline. The, the film and screen industries in Scotland is, under, is, is, is experiencing enormous growth. Our, um, our economic value report for 2019 cited the entirety of, of the money into the economy at just under half a billion pounds, and we aim to double that by 2020, by 2030. And in doing that, what we need is an industry here. We need skills and experience here. We need the the art form to be heard. My um, my director David often asks. Where is the next Lynn Ramsey? Where is the next? Where are the stories coming from? 
The um, winner of the Can of, of one of the major awards at Can this year was a film called After Sun that was made by a director called Charlie Wales. And Charlie Wales started her film career doing film on a Saturday morning at um, Scottish Kids Are Making Movies at the, the Film House in Edinburgh. We want to bring that into the classroom and we want to make that part of the expressive arts suite that we present to all of Scotland's children. Any more questions? I'm going to just ask if my um, colleagues would like to add anything before so anything else you'd like to add, Steve, David? Can I just put a plug in for the festival again? So it's in Dumfries on the uh, 22nd and 23rd of October. If you want to find out more about that, it's www.sif.scot. That's S-Y-F-F dot Scott. And we'd also be happy if anybody's interested in doing stuff. Um, we'll be doing our plans for next year very soon. So if anybody's interested in this, get in touch with us or Fee or Steve. And I'm sure we can find something for you to be doing. Um, as Fee said, there's lots of other organisations all across the country that are all doing different things. So there's about to be somebody close to you, no matter where you are, and some activity happening. So yeah, it's it's very accessible, especially now that classrooms have got iPads in them. And you've literally, as Steve said, this is a classroom is a studio now very easily. You can you can show the work on the board at the end, and you can make a film. You can and your iPad shoots and edits, um, or your tablet or whatever you happen to have in school. So it's now is the time when we can actually make this happen. Uh, we've been trying for a long, long time, but the technology is finally caught up and uh, is accessible to all. Steve? Uh, just to reiterate, if anyone's interested in getting involved in the Living Lab project, you know, get in touch and uh, like to have you on board. Um, I would say to any teachers that think they don't have the skills or the experience to actually teach this, Get in contact with the guys here. I've had lots of support from Glasgow School of Art and now I actually feel that I can teach it. <laughs> so and with the first year we had very limited technology, but there's always a workaround. So you can do it with whatever you've got. We just you just need to find out how. So ask the experts. I'd like to finish just by saying a few words about funding. Screen Education uh, has a Screen Education Fund, which is open to anyone who wants to develop their own film or screen education project. There's no lower limit for that award, and the maximum ask in any year is £35,000. There's lots of details on our website about that. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. No, they, they, all, the, all the young people are like... Did they just start talking about the serious stuff? <laughs> Um, we are here to support, here to advocate and here to share everything that we can about film and screen education. It has been my absolute pleasure to, to be here in Sankara Academy. Um, not Sankara Academy. My dad went to Sankara Academy. We're in Sankara Primary School. Um, in Sankara Primary School, I would like to thank uh, Mrs Clark and all of her P6s for letting us arrive here at one o'clock and deliver a workshop. Um, I would particularly like to thank um, Sasha, Evie, Keegan and Riley for their participation in the workshop and their, uh, their, their agreement to be part of this this afternoon. Um, thank you to Professor Steve Love from Glasgow School of Art. Thank you to David Barnes from the Scottish Youth Film Foundation. And most of all, thank you to you for joining us. Thank you to Nicola and her team at Education Scotland. Um, part of um, the reason to, to, to do this is to be very, very clear that the Screen Education team at uh, Screen Scotland want to be visible and accessible and please get in touch, please talk to us. If you've got an idea, if you've got a question, if you have a criticism, if you have something that you have been thinking about and aren't sure where to take it, we are here to help, we're here to support and we're here to champion film and screen education in Scotland. Thank you very, very much for your time and attention. I look forward to meeting you in person at some point and I look forward to uh, keeping in touch with as many of you as possible. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nicola. Um, be in touch. Have a great rest of your day.